Look at all the gear I just got from my Mavic Pro. Do I need all this? Do you? Let's see in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. Hi, this is Craig and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. Now we all love receiving packages in the mail, such as this one that I bought and I knew it was. It's a dry bag for when I go to the BBIs. Uh, I wouldn't be able to swim to shore with some of my gear. But I knew this was coming, and I knew how much I paid for it. I received these two packages today, actually last night, and this is an exciting time for the channel and for you, the viewers, because I guess the channel's grown to a size and have shown I've got the production value. The companies are actually starting to send me product to review, and in this case, these are products that are accessories for the Mavic Pro, which is the videos I've been doing most recently. Now, I was contacted by freewellgear.com and told I'd be sent this package. I thought it would be one package, but it seems to be two. And what it is is, let me look at the name exactly. It is the Mavic, Mavic Pro Professional Accessories Kit. Now, I've seen on the website what it's supposed to have in it, but uh, let's open it now. But one thing I wanted to mention is this benefits you as well because because you're liking the videos, you're watching the videos, you're subscribing, hopefully you're sharing these videos uh, to other people you think might be interested because the channel is growing at a very good clip and I guess the company has seen my quality in my videos and is happy with how I make uh, the production value. They've decided that it's worth sending me products just to review and that's great. But just so you know, I'm not paid by them. They're not a sponsor. They've sent me this and I haven't even opened it yet. I'm gonna give you a fair and impartial review of the products that are in here. And as you know, if you've watched, should put the knife down. As you know, if you've watched my episodes on the Leechy app, if something is crap, I'll tell you it's crap. I, I won't hold back. I think it's more important for me that you, the viewer, trust my opinion on things and you know that I'm not just gonna say positive things because somebody sent me product to review. But one thing you can take from somebody who's gonna send you stuff without asking you to say anything in return is that they must be pretty pretty sure that the quality of their product is, is good. And I've looked on the website to see what this package should have in it. And some of this stuff is stuff that I've already ordered myself. And is still I'm still waiting for some of it from Amazon. So some of this has the same stuff in it. Uh, namely, the landing gear that I did an episode on already. There should be one of those in here. And ND filters. And those are really super popular. Really super important, it seems, with this Mavic. Because just way too much light gets in when you're flying. Especially in the winter with a white, snowy... Uh, uh, base, it's just too bright and the camera has to take its exposures way down to, to compensate for the too much light and that seems to cause a very shuddery, juddery, jello-y image sometimes. Uh, so hopefully these ND filters A work and B will make the quality of the video better. But before we go any further, let's just make sure what's in here is what I think is in here. One, two, three, four, six different ND filters in here. Let me show you that up close. And that is designed specifically for the Mavic Pro. So it's not some other ND filter for some other small camera that they're just deciding to send and hope that it fits. Obviously they've tested it. I've seen a video they have online showing how to install them. So it shouldn't be a problem. So you've got six ND filters and you've got a brush to clean off your lenses from dust. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, I ordered something Similar to this, I've ordered three individual ND filters. I bought it from a company. You could buy whatever one you want. And I only bought three because they were like $23 or $24 a piece. So ND filters aren't cheap. So it's really awesome that I'm getting six ND filters in one package. Next thing. Ah, blade, blade protectors. I don't know what the right terminology is for. It's something I haven't bought. Something I didn't know I would need, but lately, and maybe I'll throw in a little, a little clip from Janice and I's walk in the forest. I'm gonna make an episode on it. I brought the Mavic with me and I'm flying nice and low to the ground and over a clearing, kind of a marshy area. And then it flies over my head and I turn around and isn't there a tree right there? So I have to do the stop and try not to hit the tree. Uh, barely, got really close to the little twiggy branches on the edge. And perhaps if I'd had these covering the uh, props, it wouldn't have been as big a deal. Another time I know I could use these is uh, somebody I subscribe to called Philip Bloom. He has a Mavic, he's a director slash cinematographer and he does a lot of 
various things, not just Mavic stuff, but his most recent drawing is a Mavic. And he's been doing some videos on things he's done with the Mavic. And one thing he did was fly. He's from England, so he's flying through this English bog-like forest. And literally you see twigs just going by the camera and I'm thinking, wow, this guy's taking some risks. So some of these twigs get caught up in the prop, that drone is going down. But with these on, once I put them on, we'll see how, how they fit, but I'm assuming they fit right. These will protect your props. So they'll be on your, your Mavic, the blades are spinning here, and these protect it. So if little twigs are in the way, this should push them out of the way. So if you're planning to fly tripod mode real slow through a bushy area or down a little uh, path in between trees, definitely the time to throw these on. And then this is the landing gear. So I've done a review already of the landing gear that I bought myself. So we'll see if these look to be the same. Obviously they've got the Freewell Gear logo on theirs. I bought mine from Amazon. I don't even know what the company's name was. But this looks to be, as you saw from my episode, this looks to be the same U-shaped back clip for the Mavic. Let me get my Mavic. So here's my Mavic. So as you can see, this is the clip that goes on here. These are the legs that go on here. Now, as you can see, I think all the different companies are pretty much coming up with the same design. Um, so you've seen a review of these, but it's really nice that they sent me these because if I didn't already own a set, these would be a godsend. I mean, you, I only honestly think you cannot possibly own a Mavic and not get this lift kit just because this gimbal, well, watch my episode I did on it, but this gimbal's way, way, way too close to the ground. If you have any wet grass or weeds and you're trying to land, you're gonna push your nice little camera right into those wet weeds and gum up your whole lens. Plus these back props turn into a weed whacker if you're on grass. So now one thing I'm really looking forward to, and I'm assuming it's this biggest, bigger package. As you've heard, I'm going to the BBI, the British Virgin Islands on a charter, sailing charter vacation in February. And, I haven't told you guys this. Part of the reason I'm spending the money, my wife and I are spending the money, and it's kind of an expensive vacation, is I'm turning 50. I know, eh? I don't seem 50. It's all in how you feel, not how old you are. And I don't feel 50. I feel maybe 35. So, anyways, we're going on a pretty expensive vacation. And on my 50th birthday, the actual day, we're at an island or it's a bar called the Soggy Dollar. And the reason it's called the Soggy Dollar is because you cannot actually take your dinghy to shore there. That island or that area of the island won't allow dinghies on shore. So the only way to get to shore to the Soggy Dollar, and there's another bar just a little ways up from it, also very popular, can't remember the name, but you have to swim from your boat to shore. And that's where the bar got its name because all these people would get in their board shorts or whatever, stick their money in their pocket, swim to shore, go to the bar, and of course everybody's money was soggy. So it was called the soggy dollar. So what I bought this for, this dry bag, is needless to say, I want to be able to make episodes for you guys. And I'm gonna bring my Mavic along, I'm gonna bring my G7X, which is my perfect vlogging camera. I love this camera. So good in low light, has in-body image stabilization. It's awesome camera. But this is gonna come along for sure, and my Mavic was definitely coming along for sure. If I could fit my GH4, which is what I'm recording this with, in there as well, that was coming along as well. But needless to say, I have to swim with all this expensive camera equipment. Sounds super risky. So I went out and got this dry bag. It's super thick rubber, and by the time you seal it and roll it up and strap it down, it should be perfectly waterproof. But this made me super excited, because this, Obviously, I haven't bought anything like this or even thought about buying anything like this because they're pretty, you know, they're not cheap. So, this is like, for lack of a better term, if you've heard the word pelican case, this is made of hard plastic. It's even got the free, boy, they've got logos on everything. Here's a Freewell gear logo on their case and this is hard plastic and from what I read online it's also waterproof so that's pretty cool check it out so you got maybe I'll put them in this is where you put your folded up Mavic this is where you put batteries and this has got exactly what I, I have I actually have three batteries one in the Mavic two additional batteries that I bought separate okay here's my Mavic inside the uh, case like I say, there's still lots of space for other things. Now, I'm pretty sure this is your big charging puck uh, cord. 
There's like other spaces that I'm not 100% sure, these ones here, the web, to figure out what was I supposed to be putting in there. And I'll zoom out here. This is my big, big ultra wide screen. So I actually have to step back a bit here. So these ones it says are the extra propellers. So even though your propellers are already on your drone, if you have extra propellers, uh, you stick them in here, but that still leaves more space than you need. They're showing the power brick thing in here and then even more cords here. And they're showing your additional cords that would go from your controller to your whatever Android or whatever. So uh, yeah, more than enough space, more than enough space. All right, so really hard foam and softer foam up here to really hold it in place and to protect it from any bangs. Now, if you're gonna ship your Mavic, if you have to throw it in the stow on and they make you stick it underneath, at least if your Mavic's in this thing, they can literally start playing soccer with your uh, your Mavic and nothing's gonna happen to it. So, certainly sturdy enough, but this was shipped from Hong Kong. It's a little dirty, I think it needs a shower. Let's just see if this bad boy is actually waterproof. Let's check it out. Oh yes, you are a dirty, dirty boy. Don't forget to scrub behind your ears. It's time to go swimming. I think that's wet enough. Now let's see if it actually kept the water out. Let's hope so, right? Okay, so I'm back in my office, just drying this off. Moment of truth, people, moment of truth. Pop it open. And bone dry. Not a drip of water inside. It's a wheat. So I took that thing for a bath. All right. So I said there's two things in this professional Mavic kit that I'm super excited about. In this case, awesome. Because I'm sure you're the same if you have a Mavic. If I'm bringing just the Mavic and the controller, I bring it in this tiny one. If I'm bringing the Mavic, two extra batteries, controller, cords, I throw it in this one. But you know, these batteries are loose, banging around in the bag. They're hitting each other as you're walking. The controller's in there rubbing against things. Everything's rubbing against each other. And over time, you're gonna get little abrasions and scuff marks. I mean, it won't affect the ability of the drone to fly, but it's going to, you know, make it look a little less pretty. So this case is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna throw all my gear in here, and then I just bring this into the car with me. And now that I know it's waterproof, I can even swim to shore with it. And that's pretty awesome. So super psyched about that. Next thing to test is these. The second most anticipated thing is the ND filters. And there's six ND filters on here. There's a circular polarizer. Let me just show you the thing. So we got a circular polarizer. We got an ND8, an ND16, an ND32, an ND8 with polarizer, and an ND16 16 with polarizer. That's a lot of ND filters. And they look, I'll have to see how they fit, but they look similar to what I bought. And I was spending 23 something Canadian per filter. Oh, nice. So it comes in a little Velcro kit. There's the uh, little blower brush thing to wipe off your lenses. And there's your six ND filters all lined up in their own individual little pocket. Sweet. So, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring the camera level down. I'm gonna put the Mavic down here. I'm gonna start it up with one of these ND filters on. See if it can initiate the spinning action of the gimbal when it first starts up. It's gotta be able to spin pretty much 360 in every direction for it to initialize properly. Some ND filters, and I'll show you what one looks like kind of up close. Hopefully that focuses. Some ND filters, they're so square and bulky that when the camera tries to swing around, it hits its own mount, and then the initialization fails. Before I show you it activated, let's show you how you put them on. So you got your little zip -y bag here. And you try not to touch the lens, hold it from the sides. Now what I've done is I've left my, the back spacer, there we go. I've left the back spacer on the gimbal just to give it some, some stability. And you just put it on, oh my hands are in the way. Put it on and according to the thing, you just put it on and push it down it clicks into place. So you can see there, 
it's uniformly all the way across on the gimbal or on the camera. So that seems to be as tight as you're going to get it. See? So it's on. So the next thing is to turn it on and make sure that this camera can spin around like it needs to and not hit this housing here. Okay, let's see how the Mavic Pro handles having ND filters on when it initializes. We're good to go. Good to go. Let's just see. I won't take off, but let's just make sure that she's happy. Ta-da! Starts, no blinky warning lights, nothing. So as you can see, the Mavic Pro starts up perfectly fine with these ND filters on. And that's the only thing I was worried about. So, I'll do another episode on the quality of video, but I don't want this episode to go on for an hour, so... Let's just put a check mark beside the ND filters fit and work perfectly, and I'll move on to, I guess the bush guards? I don't know what these things are called. Anyways, put them on next. So I've moved the camera up so I don't have to bend over for the rest of the episode. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how these things went on, and then I realized after I watched the video on the Freewell website, how the heck you're supposed to put them on. So it seems you have to take the props off, which I have never had to do before because I've never crashed my Mavic. Hope I never do. I've never chipped one of these props. I have no reason to take them off because the props fold up with the drone. So I had to go on their website because I couldn't put them on with the props and now I figured out you need to have the props off. The other thing too is I've never really noticed that the front arms on the Mavic are slanted and the back ones are flat. So here I'm grabbing propeller guards that are flat and trying to put them on the front and they actually don't fit that way. You gotta find the ones that have the angled edge like this one. And anyways, long and short, gotta take the props off. Angled ones go on the front and there's a left and a right obviously, it's gotta match the angle. And the flat ones go on the back. So, I'm not gonna do this on camera, I'll put them on and I'll show you the after effect. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> Looks like a massive spider now. So this is it with all of its bush guards, which I will continue to call them bush guards, on because, like I said, the only time I'd ever put all these things on, take my props off, put them on, then put my props back on, is if I'm going in the bush. So there you go. I definitely, definitely, definitely want to do one of those Philip Bloom moments where I'm flying down a path, or even better, flying backwards down a path. And uh, in tripod mode, it's going to look so awesome. But I'll put them on for that. But from everyday flying, no, probably not. So it's part of the package. The package seems to be a good deal when you incorporate how many things you get. Um, just so you know, it's looked online when I was trying to figure out how to put these props on. It's $239 on their website for the kit, which comes with obviously the case, the six ND filters, and ND filters are not cheap. Like I said, I was paying $23 Canadian per one on Amazon. Then these bush guards, and then the uh, lens cleaner thing, and I think that's it. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. On their website, I'm just, I, I don't work for them, I'm not paid by them, I just, since I was on there, I was checking. The price includes shipping worldwide for anything over $50. So this whole package with the hard case is $239, and uh, so it's well over that. It says for $50, you get free shipping worldwide. For $100, you get free shipping and some sort of free gift. Doesn't specify what the free gift is. And for over $199, uh, the free gift again, and expedited worldwide shipping for free. So even at $50, you're getting free shipping. And I've got viewers, some of you from as far away as Kazakhstan. Thanks for writing. I, I always find it cool when people write from far away places, so keep it up. So if you're in Kazakhstan or one of these other places, it's probably very few places that will ship to you for free for $50. So that seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, I know a lot of times when I buy stuff on eBay, uh, the price looks really good until you get to the part where you find out how much it's gonna cost to ship it to you. And sometimes the cost of shipping 
is almost as much as the cost of the item. So yeah. So if you can want to, if you want to look in, on their website, it's freewellgear.com. Check it out. They've got stuff for not only Mavics, all the Phantom series, all the unique series. They have stuff for cell phones. It's all accessories for uh, using like uh, Osmo type things, uh, gimbals and whatnot. So go on their website. It's a pretty cool website. And like I said, uh, they've got a lot of different stuff for a lot of different uh, purposes. I just happen to have a Mavic and so they knew that they only sent me something for Mavic uh, stuff. So like I say, I, I want to be as objective as possible. Like I said, probably wouldn't have bought the Bush Guards if that's the one thing. You can buy all these things individually on their website. I probably wouldn't have bought these. I would think of the few times I'd go in the dense forest to fly. I'd be in tripod mode and I probably would just take the risk and fly really slowly. But um, hey, now that I got them, don't need to worry about it. And uh, the hard case, now that I have it, I would uh, definitely want that because I love now the fact I can put my Mavic and all my batteries in that thing, chuck it in the backseat of my car and go without worrying about my Mavic getting crushed by something or scraped by stuff inside the bag. Oh, that's the other thing I had, landing gear, right. Landing gear, which I already did own, uh, comes in that package and that is a must. So the three things that are a must in my mind, that good Pelican case, the landing gear I'd already bought on my own, so I think that's in the package that's well worth it. Um, the ND filters, so you're getting six, you're getting every kind of ND filter you can imagine, and that's awesome. And like I showed you, the only one concern with some of the manufacturers is they make them too square, and so the, th the gimbal can't spin. We've proven that the Freewell version um, spins just fine, so it's, it has no problem initiating with that. And I'll do episodes in the near future showing the quality of video with the different ND filters. And here's the trick with the ND filters. I shoot almost all my videos at 30 frames per second. The rule of thumb is your uh, exposure time should be twice that. 30 frames per second, in a perfect world, you should be flight, flying with your camera shooting at 1 60th of a second. The problem with being outside in daylight, sun, and snow, and all these brightness, is the camera automatically slow, uh, speeds things up to the point you're getting Remember last time I was out, I think I was shooting at smaller than one one thousandth of a second. And that's causing really jittery images. So if you can have exposure be longer and smoother, um, especially in the cold where I am in Canada, it seems like the camera has a hard time when you're asking it to open and close that quickly in the cold. So you get that jello effect and the jitters. I'm hoping the end filters are going to make a huge difference. And if they do, I will be super happy. And also I'm gonna show episodes of the improvement in the video quality with the different ND filters. And you've got them all the way up to ND32. No matter what the outside conditions are, even on an overcast day, I'll probably be using an ND filter of some sort, probably the lower ones, four or eight. And there we go. So ND filters, I definitely would have bought. These landing gear, definitely, definitely would have bought. Uh, case, definitely would have bought. And uh, it's just nice to have it all in a nice little kit. So thank you to uh, Freewell Gear for, uh, for sending that to me. You can see the description below for the website. And um, if any other companies have Mavic or sailing gear they want to send to me to review, I'm more than happy to review it on the caveat that you don't get to tell me what to say. <laughs> so if you sell crap, don't send it to me because if it's crap, I'll tell you it's crap. And that's probably not what you want to hear. And it'll be objective. I want to make sure that my viewers know that I'm only going to say something's good when I've... Uh, when I've experienced it and tested it. In this case, I've tested putting on these bush guards. I haven't tested flying them yet. Now, if in the upcoming days I'm using these and I find that they're not as good as I'm thinking they are right now, I will definitely let you know in the upcoming episodes. So if you enjoyed this episode, give it a like. If you haven't already, subscribe for more Mavic tutorials during the winter time and more Maverick use in the BVIs when I'm there and sailing this summer on the Thousand Islands and the Great Lakes. So check out my upcoming episodes. Have a good one, and until then, safe cruising.